Hi, my name is Alyssa Peak. I am the owner of Peak Photography. I am a virtual presence coach, photographer, artist, and public speaker. And I am here today with Amina Mitchell Alexander. Amina is the hairstylist and makeup artist that I use for all my photo shoots for my clients. And uh, we really wanted to have this conversation because when Black Lives Matter happened this last time again um, with George Floyd, uh, we, I called her and I said, how are you? What's going on for you and your family? And, you know, I want to learn from you. Um, and one of the things that came up, and I'll introduce you in a second, but one of the things that came up for me is that, like, you like to be called Black, and that is so uncomfortable for me. And we had this conversation because I was just brought up that you don't say that, right? You say African American. But the truth is, you're from Trinidad, right? So right. what is your story, Amina? So hello, everyone. Alyssa, thank you so much for starting this conversation. Um, I am a hair and makeup artist, and I've been doing this for, oh God, over 15 years now, or almost 15 years, which sounds crazy. But yeah, just to, I, I'm okay saying that I'm Black. I am from Trinidad. I was born and raised in Trinidad, and I migrated here when I was 11, 12 years old and makeup has always been a passion for me growing up watching my mom do bridal hair and makeup back in trinidad she only did bridal and i'm the last child of three so she always had me with her and i always say like i came out to be the super girly girl more feminine type and my sister was like a tomboy and my brother could care less right um so i always look at how my mom was able to make these women feel like they they were so happy and thankful yeah but even beyond that your mom was a business owner so she was a black business owner and now you're a black business owner and that's um, you know that's great my both of my parents were entrepreneurs um before we came to the u.s in trinidad my dad had a small taxi um, company and like bus service company. And he was also to a driving instructor um, first. And my mom had a small boutique where she sold um, beauty products and fashion also. She sold clothes and she traveled um, to different places and came back to Trinidad and sold her stuff and also too she was a beauty professional as well she when johnson and johnson was one of these big companies back in the day that had global presence she was a sales rep for them and that's how she got into the beauty business so fast forward um i think around when my mom had me that's when her entrepreneurship and small business stuff was really strong and i grew up seeing that and also so i i followed that great role model it was such a great role model i always say if it wasn't for my mom i would not be here like and my grandmother too um my grandmother was a very people would like to say vain back where we come from they're like you're so there's so much vanity in you so but it's really being prideful um and taking that extra step in taking care of yourself and it's not so much about vanity and like i don't think that vanity needs to have a negative condensation attached to it anyway like the definition between confidence and arrogance right you can be confident that doesn't mean you're arrogant you can be arrogant and confident right but they're mutually exclusive from each other and i think why my family or the woman in my family took their parents so important especially when you grow up not having a lot what can you control essentially right you can only control how you look and how you present yourself to other people not because you're poor not because you're suffering from mental trauma or, or physical things that's going on everyone does not necessarily need to know that from the outside um so, i you know, to ask yeah it's okay yeah i always they always say you know you have that one chance to impress someone or first impression essentially when someone sees you looking a mess, they're going to automatically assume that's who you are and you shouldn't be judged on just based on how you you look and people should take the chance but the reality in the society that we live in people just judge you based on how you look 
Yeah, so. there are seven assumptions or more than seven assumptions, but there are some basic assumptions that people make the minute they see. You. But I really wanted to ask you, you are the stepmother of a, of a black young adolescent and a mother of a young girl. So yeah. what is it like in today's world to be a mother or stepmother to um, your stepson? Um, it's tough, you know, because when I first started dating my now husband, um, Anthony, he was four or five years old. And so I instantly became a mom and that wasn't, but I always had like that maternal stuff. I was always the girl that babysat as a side job um, in college and high school and all that. So it was totally fine for me. And as I adjust, I was like, oh my God, I'm responsible for someone now, like all of a sudden. Um, and now how the climate has been changing. Um, Anthony is really big. My kids are really tall for the age. Uh, my dad is 6'1", my husband is 6'1 and a half or 0'6'2". Um, I have my uncles, they're all on the taller side. I'm a little on the shorter side. Um, and they are super tall and big. And there have been situations in the past where a lot of young black boys were mistaken to be older um, mm -hmm. than what they were and they could have been playing or had other things and you know the police or um you know there was some unfortunate things that happened to these uh kids so that's something that's always been in the back of my mind i always talk to my husband and i'm like you know speak to anthony about um these things because he's 12 he's 13 now and a lot of people think he's 16 or 17 he's 13 years old he responded to any of this i mean he's old enough to understand what's going on what how does anthony have to say about um, it you know he's fine you know for me i haven't talked to him about this personally uh his dad and his mom we try not to we want to let kids be kids um my daughter also to she goes to a afrocentric um preschool which at first it didn't dawn on me for her to go and be a part of but I think it's important we don't necessarily teach our kids about like color and black and white and all of that especially for my daughter she's four years old um I don't instill like this we're black and we're white but I do want her to know she's black and she's beautiful um and let her know that no matter what like don't let people um, I'm, I'm more empowering confidence in her at home and not about like colorism. I feel like once they get older and she starts recognizing things herself, that's when I will start discussing. And I think that's a lot of things that's going wrong with people now. They're like influencing young black kids, young white kids, young English kids. It's like, oh, this child is white or this child is black rather than oh, my schoolmate or my school friend or Alyssa or Amina, like we have names and stop identifying people by the color of their skin and more of, say more descriptive things like, oh, mommy, that girl with the long hair, you remember we went X, Y, Z, these are how kids, um, my daughter, she's trying to explain something to me or remind me of something. She's like, oh, well, you remember that time down the road, down the block and, and describe to me, she's not saying, oh yeah, the white girl or the black girl or this. Um, and I think that's, that's what needs to change um, essentially first. But back to what you asked me about how I felt about you know raising, it's nerve, it's nerve wracking, especially that I know right now he's in Atlanta. Oh, wow. with his mom and they have been quarantining and you know keeping out of harm ways and it's very 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 nerve-wracking especially him living out in atlanta so it keeps me up at night but i try to just make sure that my husband is speaking to him anthony is an a plus 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 student he is a he's on a um advanced class and um he, yeah, but no disrespect to that. Some of these kids that get killed are all of that too, right? So it doesn't, it's none of these kids' fault. They could be the smartest guided in the class. Right. But, you know, the way the policing is right now, they don't, they don't care about that. That doesn't matter. That's not going to deter someone from assuming they're... Yeah, assuming that they're bad, bad seed or up to no good. Um, Which is the conversation that is, you know, everyone needs to have to change. And I think like for me, um, I'm having this race conversation with every single one of my friends on a daily basis. 
And I think well, that's so important. I yeah. think it's so important. Like, um, even if people aren't doing it publicly and they're doing it privately, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm a little conflicted, honestly. I'm just going to be honest with individuals that do know me that are from a different race that haven't either said something to me privately or even publicly. It makes me feel like I know where you stand right um in a way but i don't that's just a personal but then i don't want to be judgmental i'm giving the benefit of the doubt that maybe these individuals are struggling with some conflicts within themselves or their families as to why they feel afraid to either speak out and say something about it but i feel like it should be everyone should be having discussion at home um yes I and mean, you don't know that they're not right so just because they're not saying something to you doesn't mean they're not having them privately sometimes they don't know what to say to you right they just don't know what to say it's kind of like when someone dies it's like what do you say right so it's like this uncomfortable thing and maybe they think you'll be more offended if they're going to say hey amina let's talk about race oh, and we need to know I think, and that's why I said for myself, we're all human beings. So we're going to jump like I assumed X, Y, Z, but I'll leave it as that um, because this is not really for me to, this conversation is not for me to bring to some of my white friends or other races and be like, unless it came up, um, I don't think, I, we can have it either which way, but it's not my responsibility, I don't think, personally, to pick up the phone and be like, hey, what do you think about what's going on? This is crazy. No. But for the women that you do know and your friends that are, are of different races, what is the one thing you would tell them to do? Call you? Pick up the phone. I don't know. Like, what is it you want them to do? Not me too, but I feel like if you know me personally, if we're calling people colleagues or friends or coworkers or associates, I think you do have that responsibility. Like, take um, accountability for your circle and for the individuals. If you true, if this is a more of a personal thing, um, and you have to make that conscious decision. How much does? How much? do I matter to you, all right? Um, do you care about me at all? Then you would check in and just say, hey, be honest. Yeah. I'm so awkward, I don't know what to say. I have no idea how you're feeling. I had that conversation, I called you and I said, I don't know what to say. That's it, that's all you have to say. You know, I don't, this is, this is not something that I promote, this is something I don't even know how to start. But Amina, as someone that I know, as someone that I trust, as someone that I see that's a decent human being, um, how are you? Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not mad at anyone who haven't. It just, that whole perception, it leaves that when you don't say anything at all. And then I now have to leave my assumptions on the table and start making excuses, essentially, for what's going on with you. Right. Closed mouths don't get fed. That's exactly. something. So, exactly. so, 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 so like, we're all playing this, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know how she feels, I don't know, and so I'm assuming you're thinking something, you're assuming something, and then nothing happens in the process. Right, so, so I think it's about open dialogue, and I think it's yeah. about um, everyone, uh, I would say white people and non-right people, people are other races, it's not just only white people, but it's mostly white people, <laughs> about yeah. just looking at our own looking ourselves in the mirror and questioning the things that we were taught to believe, you know, or sometimes we were, cause we were taught, we were not born this way. We we're taught from society. Now my parents didn't necessarily teach me, but society teaches you. Um, and so I think it's important just to question what we're taught as we should question everything that we're taught, no matter what the subject is to quite honestly, right. Mm -hmm. To look at the news and maybe question the news. Um, and just question things. That's how you learn and that's how you make the world a better place. 100%. And um, I've had conversations with other people and I'm like, don't just take one or two um, things that you're seeing on social media or hearing from the one or two black. There's always going to be two sides of the story and how some black people feel right now and others, um, some successful or who are not or who are brainwashed or who truly don't have any empathy you need to have empathy and understand 
um, why there's so much pain, why there's so much struggle. Um, before we were talking, you were saying uh, it was uncomfortable for you to like call me black and I'm comfortable with it. And you were thought by, you know, society to say African-American. Um, I always say I'm black, um, Afro-Caribbean, if we want to be politically correct. Okay. But all black people essentially are from African descent. So we're all African, but African what? Um, I'm not born in America, so I'm not African-American, right? Yeah. So I am Afro-Caribbean. So, and that's something that a lot of people, is just educating yourself, like on what people are trying to be so politically pro correct that they're doing the wrong things. Exactly, um, that's exactly so that. Really just say black because I'm black. <laughs> right? No, it really is uncomfortable. I've been practicing it. I've been really like just talking about the situation and saying blacks, which is so hard for me to do. Because for over 400 years, um, the word black has been used in a negative way. Um, people that are not black, white people, or other just, you know, have used it if we're talking about police brutality or injustice, has been using that word black. Um, when they call the cops, they don't say African-American. Some do now who want to be political, but they'll just say, oh, a black man is robbing me, a black, a black. So now um, white people that feel um, uncomfortable with using the word black because they don't want to associate themselves with racism or feel right. or bias won't want to use black to describe or, you know. Because it was um, me derogatory. Yeah, exactly. Like why? It is what it is. So it's so interesting. So I want to wrap up here, but I want to kind of just take some takeaways. And one is that um, really who you are, you know, you're from Trinidad, you're a mom of two kids, you're a woman business owner, a black woman business owner. And, you know, the, the purpose of having this conversation today was to let really people get to know Amina on a level. Um, she's not just my makeup artist, she's my friend, she's my partner in my business. And um, I wanted to honor her. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And, you know, what I do, I don't just, and that's the thing I want people to understand, you know, with what we do too. It's not like we only work with white people or we only work with black people or we only work with Asian. We work with women in general in a wide range. And also too, for people to understand, um, because of our backgrounds, like I'm professionally trained, I'm an, a fine artist by trade and my passion, my God-given talent is makeup artistry and hairstyling. So for me, it's never been a white and a black thing. It's about how to make women feel and look beautiful um, about themselves every single day and not just how to show up in photos or how to show up as like, what, how do you feel about yourself? But more so, and, and, that's, and, and that's something that I think I do want us to have another discussion about on different um, individuals feeling comfortable working on different races and ethnicities. And that's another reason too why I think I started because when I work with my black clients, I always hear, oh my God, you know, they worked with a, a white makeup artist or white hairstylist and they had no idea on what to do. And I find that so funny and strange because here I am as a black artist and I'm like, well, why is it that I'm okay or know how to do a white person or Asian person or someone with a different skin tone than mine? And it's not necessarily on the same level for artists that are not black to do the same on a client that's black or Asian. So, well, I also think uh, it's interesting when I um, I photograph many black women, and when they say when we have the pre-shoot consultation and we talk about the hair and makeup and the clothes and the everything, it always. They, they question whether the makeup artist is going to understand their hair or is going to understand their skin. And I've always felt so good by saying, my makeup artist is black. I probably said African-American at the time, but, um, but you know, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm equipped with that. Like, we've got that covered. So, um, you know, it's always a pleasure working with you, Amina. And um, yeah. We don't know when we're going to be back to shooting just yet um, due to COVID, but hopefully it'll be soon. I miss you so much. I and, miss you too. Um, we'll have another conversation and maybe some of our friends to join us. What? 
I, I miss, you know, our little silly behind the scene photos that we try to do a few times and we'll, we laugh and giggle and post that up on um, Instagram. I really do miss what I do, you know, because what we do is a little on the softer, lighter side to impact women on a bigger uh, level and people don't really see well, I think people do see it, the importance yeah, and the so they need photos right. to promote themselves and they need the hair and makeup in the photos to promote themselves. So it's, we got them covered. So thank you so much. I totally love you. And um, thank you so much for teaching me uh, what is right, what is wrong, what, what you prefer, what you prefer to be called and um, not called, but described as I should say. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an honor to know you and I hope to bring more friends into the conversation. Absolutely. I think this is a step in the right direction and there's so much more that we can talk about, but we'll be on here for four hours and we're not. I know, there. I know. All right, sweetie. Good love you. And we'll talk Bye. soon. Thanks, Alyssa. Bye, Bye everyone.